Welcome to The Gut Check, nutrition and gut health for active people, a podcast where we are talking functional nutrition for functional fitness and a functional you. Remember, if your gut is not functioning optimally, you are not functioning optimally. I am your host, registered dietitian and nutritionist and OCR fan, Kate Klein. You can connect with me on Facebook at The Dublin Dietitian or go to my website for additional resources, services, and the video recorded versions of these episodes at www.dublindietitian.com. That's D U B L I N D I E T I T I A N. As a standard disclaimer, the information provided here is for educational purposes only. While I strive to provide accurate and helpful information to my listeners and viewers, I cannot take into account individualized circumstances. This is not a substitute for personalized nutrition, health, and medical advice from a health professional. If you are ready to get your personalized plan, you can go to DublinDietitian.com and schedule a complimentary strategy session to get a game plan in place for you to hit your health and fitness goals. So let's get to it. Hello, Team Gut Check, and if you are new to the channel, welcome aboard. My name is Kate, and today's episode, we are talking about visceral manipulation. What is it? What does it help? Who's it for? And what to expect? So my introduction to this is still fairly new. I learned about it maybe about a year ago. I was listening to a lecture on H. pylori, GERD, heartburn, those kind of things, and the doctor just sort of like tossed it in there, you know, like, um, well, make sure you rule out that they don't have a hiatal hernia. And if so, refer them to a visceral manipulation specialist. So they don't have to have surgery, but okay. Now moving on to the nutrition and lab side, (laughs) I was just like, wait, what, what is this thing? What is this non-invasive manipulation we can do? Um, you know, over a decade into the gut health world, and I had never heard of this. So I started learning more, looked at the recommended websites. And then by coincidence, I actually started to work with a physical therapist who specializes in visceral manipulations and was one of the early trained, like fully trained therapists in this. Um, So I'm excited to have Eileen on to share what it is, because she is specialized in visceral manipulation. And I feel like this is a great conjunction to the work that I do. So maybe you've heard of me talking about the wheel of health, but I basically believe to optimize our health, the foundations of that health revolve around nutrition and gut health. You know, what, what do you eat and what can you actually absorb and utilize? Um, sleep, quality, quantity, duration, frequency, um, stress, and sort of all hormone things in there, cortisol, sex hormones, thyroid hormones, and then what I call physicality. And that's the part that I don't address as much in my programming because it tends to be a little more hands-on. So whether that's massage or alignment, posture, foot health, um, exercise component. So all of that kind of comes together. So since I do telehealth work, I love when I can have these guests on who are more specialized in this area. So I'm glad to have Eileen sharing how she does hands-on work with the organs, the connective tissues, the viscera, and how that can help people who are in pain, who have pelvic floor health issues, GI issues, shoulder issues, back pain, and more. So I'm really excited to dive into this and spread the awareness that there are options out there available to people. So listen in. Welcome back to the next episode of the Gut Check, guys. Today, we're talking to Eileen Burns. She's a licensed physical therapist in Indiana um, with 30 years experience, and she specializes in pelvic health physical therapy. Um, with a focus on this very unique aspect that I've only recently learned about called visceral manipulation, um, which is a fascinating and to me kind of a little known skill that we're going to talk about. Um, Eileen's been incorporating this technique in into her work with her pelvic patients with bowel and bladder problems, as well as chronic pelvic pain. Um, and I know a lot of people who listen to this podcast may not know what that is, this visceral manipulation. So I'm glad you're here to learn about this um, because I'm really curious as well. So Eileen, thank you so much for being here and agreeing to do this. Can you introduce yourself a little bit more and share about how you got into this specific area of practice? Yes. Well, thanks for having me. Um, I really appreciate this opportunity to talk to everybody about visceral manipulation. 
But first of all, uh, pelvic physical therapy was actually new to me in 2004. So it's a very specialized, um, yeah. has to be trained um, specialty area of physical therapy. So 2004, I don't even know that pelvic physical therapy exists until my boss sent me to get training on that one. Nice. And then as I practice um, pelvic physical therapy, by the way, that these are the conditions that we see for pelvic uh, with pelvic dysfunction, bladder and bowel dysfunction and pelvic pain. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times uh, patients that we saw on pelvic may have some sort of an incontinence issue. And as I practice um, with pelvic physical therapy, I I'm finding more and more seeing patients with chronic pain, um, constipation, and GI problems. Those are in results of could have been a surgery or it's just like a chronic pain that just sits there. So I have this um, colleague that actually um, already been a pelvic physical therapy who's also incorporating um, visceral manipulation to her practice. So I was just curious. So we do. Um, back in the day, we do have like a group of pelvic physical therapists here in Indianapolis. It's kind of like meet once a month or you know every three oh, months. So wow. yeah, she shared a mastermind group. <laughs> yes, <laughs> so she shared that, that visceral manipulation. I was just so curious about it. And I'm I'm always open to um, new things or what's new technology out there or new techniques because sometimes I get frustrated too if I can't help a patient I have to send them somewhere else that actually have some other skills that or that I think that may help them mm -hmm. so I got into this um training the, the visceral manipulation that I'm trained with is from the Baral Institute okay. so this the the Burrell Institute is from um, actually the ones who found this. Uh, the founder of the visceral manipulation technique is Jean Pierre Burrell. He's actually a French osteopath and he was a former physical therapist way, way back. And then he got into the visceral manipulation itself. So he has been training um, trainers and certified trainers all over the world. And I got a chance to get in to this training so i've done pretty much like the whole five courses of it so each one of those are like very extensive more about 20 30 hours of a training each course okay so um i like visceral manipulations actually a manual therapy so that's the reason why uh, most or some of the pelvic physical therapists get into this because it's really helpful for our pelvic patients so mm -hmm. as a physical therapist i'm actually we're like, uh, we like to see emotion. We're like, the, uh, we see symmetry. We find dysfunction and we treat that. Yes. So this We're is cause. Cause. Yeah, so this is pretty much in line with what we do as far as looking for a dysfunction on your body, but in so different level. So when I, when, when we say like a manual, it's very gentle, very specific uh, technique that we put our hands on so visceral itself is an internal organs. So yeah. when, when I try to explain it to my patient, okay. So when you open a turkey on Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. those internal organs technically doesn't fall on its own. So it has <laughs> right. this, yeah, it has this connected, it's connected to one internal organ to the other, but by disconnected tissue. Right. So it's all over our body. Yes. Yeah, so fascia and all that. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So technically, yeah, that is our visceral manipulation. Okay. So how, I guess, yeah. Could you, could you explain a little, like, how does that work? What is, what do you do? I know you said it's hands-on, but I guess like how would visceral manipulation be different from like stretching or massage or foam roll work or how right. do they work in tandem with each other a little bit? Okay. So, um, Tissue lose their normal motion when they become inflamed. So I always saw, so when we do, when we think about it on the muscle, we stretch the muscle, we dig into it that harder because it's a muscle, right? Mm -hmm. So with the visceral, it's so uh, light because we're getting into like in between under the skin mm -hmm. and before the actual uh, organ itself. So, well, 
what we're what we're actually finding let's say for example you know if when we feel when we're sick we kind of feel sluggish right right so that's the same thing with the visceral so imagine somebody who's taking so many medications and you know how would that take on to our liver sometimes Mm -hmm. so and then and it goes like into like oh first of all when we when we look at the patient let's say if they have like a pelvic pain sometimes the visceral doesn't really just straight to your pelvis it's it's actually it's assessing where is the most of your restriction that may cause that so right so um let's say um one of those is that like if I have a back pain patient, let's say if you have a chronic back pain and you've done everything that you, you know, that's the reason why I see patients who is like had actually a chronic pain patient that has done physical therapy in the past and they could not, they can't kick it up. I mean, those pain. And I love hearing it to my patient. They did all the tests. They didn't do anything. Mm-hmm. they've done everything and that that didn't seem to help me uh, yes uh, yeah. <laughs> a lot of my audience the people are like I've tried everything I'm like no but you haven't <laughs> yes so, so yes there's so many options out there so much amazing stuff coming out so yeah I, I love this topic here so yeah. so I'm gonna I'm gonna get so three ah, okay. so this is our pelvis so we have our pelvis right here and I have my uterus and my bladder and all that so Oh, just one, one, one um, example will be your back pain. So you have your back pain, you're stretched, you do all your exercises, you, you know how you do your core, engaging your core and all that. Mm-hmm. But there still have some pain back there. So when I have a patient that comes with me, you know, and I'll kind of dig in. So what are, what are, what's the history behind everything? You know, they may have some surgery. They may have some hysterectomy mm-hmm. or they may have some chronic uh, infection. So I'm going to jump in. Uh, let me give you one success story that I have with a back pain. Yeah. Uh, that will explain it a little bit. So I have a patient who, uh, who was, uh, was 80, she's, she's 80 years old and had like, a, she started with UTI. Mm-hmm. So UTI that they did an antibiotic that did not kick that in. I mean, you have a second box of antibiotic, still having problem, right? Right. So they did a test again, and this time it's a kidney infection now. Mm-hmm. So it went up to the kidney. So during those times, so imagine uh, three to four bouts of antibiotics. So right. and then it, it prolonged like all four weeks, more than a month. And she ended up with back pain. So mm-hmm. her last test was like all clear. <laughs> she mm-hmm. the infection's gone. And then we, UTI is gone. And then now she's still on antibiotic for prophylactic, you know? Mm-hmm. So maybe, you know, let's do one more bout of antibiotic. But the pain is still there and she could not sleep. Oh, so sorry. mind you, her son is actually a massage therapist. And... Okay. Came, yes, so he came to me. He, he found me from a, a colleague of mine who's a physical therapist as well. So I was like, okay, go to Eileen. So, um, so I went to see her and that same day with my assessment, I found that her um, kidneys are like, um, what you call that, stuck to mm-hmm. the back. Oh. So okay. So Imagine essentially like that, that viscera was tight and sluggish and not released right. into where things should be. Yes. And then so um and so I did do visceral manipulation with her, but I went um I actually found that restriction on her a lot of restriction, but the main problem that she has actually is on her kidneys. So uh, I work on the kidney and the visceral manipulation that day. And then I I said, okay, let's follow up next week and see how you're doing. I have not heard from them. It's like, I was so nervous about it. This is one of those, like uh, the first, she was my first kidney case. Ah. (laughs) You're like learning. (laughs) Yeah. So this was like on my first, uh, first few uh, months that I actually get, get into visceral manipulation. And then here you go. So they came back and then. I was like, I'm so excited. I'm so curious, you know, what they're going to say after that. And then the son was like, hey, mom slept 
pretty much more than 10 hours after oh, she left here. That's she had her long, long, long um, much sleep needed. and rest, much needed sleep. And then, yeah, her pain has like um, went down and, you know, like we probably have like a two, three more sessions after that because I'm finding, you know, of course you had that um, getting her into more like an active walking and all that because everything kind of got restricted on her. So yeah, we, and then of course, send them with exercises and all that. So that's one thing, you know, like uh, my, my favorite story for, for a success story for that. So yeah, so really, so, so um, now go ahead. So with visceral manipulation, so I know you specifically tend to work mostly with the, the pelvic floor and everything and, and the pelvic health. Um, is there visceral manipulation for other areas in the body or is it all pretty much there in the no. abs and the core and the Definitely. internal? Um, I, when I, when I, when a patient comes to me, I don't really look at, okay, I'm going to check your, I'm going to check her liver and all that and all that. That it doesn't work pretty much like that. But I do have, in my experience, I do have, when they come to me with a problem, let's say I have a patient that has a shoulder pain that, chronic shoulder pain. So uh, one example is that when I was in, I went to Beijing and we have um, athletes that's actually um, badminton mm -hmm. athlete for the Olympics. And we have this sports PT work on ortho shoulder and all that. Like, yeah, she, range of motion is pretty good, you know, um, but they still have some pain, you know, like a end range so all right let's let's get our visceral uh, technique in so this is when I, I actually went there for uh, um just to introduce them for pelvic physical therapy and also introduce them to visceral so i found her restriction on her liver oh, so amazing. our liver Web. is on our right side of mm -hmm. our rib cage mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. technically um so, uh, so you apply, so as a manual therapist trained in visceral manipulation, I applied my um, visceral technique on the liver technique to this um, patient, oh, this wow. athlete. So I got that um, range of motion a little bit more further and more fluid. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's for the visceral to function properly, each organ needs to be able to glide and slide in relationship to all other tissues or restrictions or structures, okay. right? So it, fascia, still connective tissue, fascia, and it's all over our body. It may change the names, but it's all fascia that connects yeah. everything. Yes. So, so yeah. What are the types of things that cause this lockup to happen? I imagine some of it's like just our perpetual bad posture as a society. Um, you said inflammation, so like the physical, in, nutritional infections, yeah, infections, it, injury. Yeah, um, many factors can uh, cause tissue inflammation. We all know that, you know, infections, direct trauma to it, repetitions of movement, diet environmental toxins and emotional stress. You yeah. know, sometimes I always tell my patient, your mind may be ready, but not your body <laughs> to heal. Or your body is ready to heal, but not your mind. It's amazing, the connection. It, it, it is. And then, Dude. you know, we always, we, we always uh, stress out and hold on to something that increases our internal abdominal pressure. We all know that. So I will have, you know, that, Diaphragmatic breathing exercises is my get-go on the first day. Mm, Your take home like today. Apartment breathing type of thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Your, whatever I do today, whatever I release, if I release some restrictions or adhesions, your take home. What I want you for your homework is that keep it fluid, keep it moving by doing your diaphragmatic breathing exercises. Because Diaphragmatic breathing exercises is like an accordion. It gives you that accordion effect. You take a deep breath in and then you breathe out, breathe, in, breathe in and then breathe out. That alone massages your organs inside. So yeah, each you know each living things has well, we all have motion in our life, right? Mm -hmm. The universe move, you know. 
our organs move. We all have mobility. We actually trained into assessing how, what to expect as far as mobility of our liver, of our each internal organ. So we have a chart right here. Mm -hmm. Our stomach moves side to side and up and down to train that food, right? right. So right. same thing with the liver that goes side to side, up and down, and then up a little bit more diagonal and all that also with the diaphragm, everything. We just pay attention to our heart, but technically everything in our body has to move. It has its own motility, it has its own motion. <laughs> everything vibrates, everything moves, yes. it stretches, so, needs to, yes. So they it, can yeah. function and so they can do their job. So if I have a patient with a constipation, they're on a, another success story. <laughs> I was saying, I yeah, if, about, if we can, I, I was gonna, yeah, um, I would love to hear a little bit about how it works in like constipation. And then the one that I only more recently learned could even be affected by um, visceral manipulation and how I learned about it was the hiatal hernias and heartburn. Um, yes. so yeah, if you could talk about those, those are right. fascinating topics. So, well, uh, always. yeah, another, okay, another case number two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, I've seen, um, recently I've been seeing um, patients uh, post-chemo and radiation therapy. I've seen patients post-surgery that after a really uh, extensive um, scoliosis correction surgery, they ended up with a constipation, right? Mm -hmm. So, well, they gave them calcium, very high calcium. You know, you have to have to do this calcium and all that. You know, you, you probably, this is probably one of those patients I might send you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, is there anything else we can do with that, uh, to cut that calcium down? Maybe you can find it on your food. Mm -hmm. but, <laughs> and then we have, uh, we have post uh, chemo radiation on, they were discharged with stool softener, right? So um, with our, I was gonna say, with, with colon. So a lot of times I'm finding our bladder problem and constipated patients problem right on their colon. And usually at the end of it, like on the sigmoid, like at the end, you know, end of your colon, before it goes to your rectum and before you pass that bowel. So that's, um, we have a technique that actually work to, so it's more like, uh, again, once every test says they couldn't find anything, that's me. So this is more mechanical, <laughs> structural. I love so, that. Uh, yeah, so I'll, okay, so I'll, as long as we're not dealing with active cancer and all that, so they, they've done that, they're cancer free and all that. Okay, this is my this is my time to shine now. So let's work on this and get you off to the softener. So yeah, I find that uh, mostly liver and colon is the two techniques that I normally find. So patients, um, so you can expect, I was going to say um, hernia. So we'll find that, a little, you know, I have patients that, you know, will on palpation will finding that it takes us to where, okay, well, it's, appears to me that's probably more than that. So hernia or not hernia. So it takes mm -hmm. you to that yeah. assessment. So see, it's actually, you know, we're, we're trained to palpate and I hate to say listen, but technically really listen to where is the anatomy. So you have to really be, um, know your anatomy and really know, okay, what's next to that and what is normal and what's not normal. So same thing. So we have like, uh, I did, I have already have a training in thorax. So we have that uh, manipulation. It goes all the way to your um, esophagus down to your stomach. So, and yeah, but again, when they come in here with, I don't want them to get frustrated on the first time because I will have neck pain patient and I'm working on their legs mm -hmm. because it, a lot of times you have to release the most of the restriction first. It's, what yeah. costs that? And it's amazing. I know like, um, phys um, like I, I have some physical therapist friends who work with runners and yeah, it's like, we start at the feet. Everything starts kind of at the feet and then we work our way up and that can help <laughs> with the headaches and the neck pain and the back pain. So yeah, that, that kinetic chain, that web of fascia is just 
it's it, all connected. It, <laughs> it yeah. all has those ripple effects. So that's it's really all, yes, yes. So yeah, and there you go. And you know, um, we always COVID patients. I've seen patients with COVID. You know, uh, long hauler for like chest um, shortness of breath, uh, even really bad asthma and all that. Uh, we look at the, the they get so imagine how restricted that tissue. Yeah, that is all information that is sitting the there. Yes. Mm -hmm. So even even if you try, you know, like we do tests. We test. I test our my patients. We we have our normal six minute walk test. You can't even you can't even walk six minutes without sitting down and short of breath. You know, this this is like post COVID. This is like post three months off of COVID. Yeah. So, and put her on, you know, like really blood high blood pressure already because of this. So that other uh, success story, getting your, your endurance back. So, you know, we have like, I, I still see, I still put my physical therapy hat on, mm -hmm. manual test, structural, you know, like end range, palpation and all that. And then your functional outcome, so I still have those to kind of like test and see if my work is really affecting or really has an effect and improve their, their movement. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. does that answer your, your GI and your hernia? <laughs> um, well, I, I would love to dive in a little because I know, you know, I work with a lot of people with heartburn and a lot of the audience, you know, GERD mm -hmm. and heartburn and all yeah. that. Um, so the fact that like a lot of times people with heartburn are put on you know, the generic kind of catch all this, let's throw them on a PPI and some antacids. And I know I work yeah. on like the gut health of microbiome H pylori diet, yeah. but it was more recent that I'd learned there's this possible physical implication of the hiatal hernia that you can do visceral manipulation potentially to help with. Yes. Um, so yeah, I'd love to hear like, how does that work? What, like, what does a session look like of visceral manipulation? So you can expect to have like, uh, my hands will be on your skin. Mm -hmm. So I'll have my patient really, you know, I can have them wear a gown. If they're like a male patient, you can just take your shirt off for me. You know, you won't, if you want a gown, I'll put it's going to be out. <laughs> so I'm going to have, I, You're getting I really is gonna, it, I, yes, I, it's, <laughs> it's really, and, and if I have to do, I can manipulate, I can do, uh, if I'll do like a liver lift for them, there is like a technique where I, I had to really, okay, I'm going to give you a hug now because okay. I'm going to be right behind you and really dig it into, not really digging in, but softly <laughs> putting my hand under your rib cage mm -hmm. and palpating that restriction. So, okay. and I, yeah, I, I have my, I actually have a GI problems myself. So I, I have lots of GI problems. So this is the reason why I went on and on and on on the visceral manipulation. This is well, you have less GI problems now though, right? <laughs> right. It is it's less now, but I'm, I mean, I grew up, I grew up with the GI problems. I grew up with stomach pain and I know what it feels like. Sometimes it's, it's really scary sometimes when you have that symptoms because yeah I can feel you know like it will go the pain can go all the way to my back yeah you know it, and it causing me like a thoracic pain right on the upper back and it mm -hmm. you know and that can and 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 that can cause you know like I live with that you know I thought I was just normal being to live with that but I don't need to so like I said so I mean cutting out your your medications from doing that Plus your visceral manipulation and what do you do to exercise stress, bringing down your stress level too, <laughs> that mm -hmm. will help. But um, I'm finding if I have a patient, again, not, I don't normally, if I have a um, GI or GERD patient that comes to me, I'm not just going to go straight putting my hands on your chest. Let's find your esophagus and your stomach. The same thing. It may not be straight there is what they're, Sometimes what's the pull, it can be from the liver pulling it, or it can be lower. So the, that's, that's um, the amazing part of the visceral manipulation is that, you know, okay, you're, you're finding a restriction. Sometimes it's not directly to that. But most of the time, um, when we have those, um, I'm finding, well, for, for the patients, when, when we do, these are like the fascia 
it is kind of like slip off a little bit of, of the um, where, where, where they're supposed to be, just kind of getting off the space. So what we find on the visceral manipulation, we're not digging in and trying to put it back. So the visceral manipulation is actually uh, just engaging the tissue and allowing the tissue to do what they need to do to release to whatever restriction they're pulling under or up. So what we try to facilitate to help to that organ, that viscera to really get off of that situation, wherever they've been stuck to unstuck themselves, you know, we can't, we can't do, we can't really dig in deeply to kind of like, okay, you go up there or you go down here. So sometimes the restriction can be all the way up mm -hmm. to your, um, actually to your, um, uh, esophagus, to your trachea, all, or all the way down to your core yeah. or on. So there's like a technique for the stomach as well. So we do, I do, um, we assess the stomach and how, and how the stomach actually moving in sync with the liver. So, so everything has, you know, there's, there, there's like an assessment that we do. Okay. This is not, doesn't, this is not moving how the liver is moving as well. Mm -hmm. So the restriction can be lower. You know, yeah. so it, it, it may, and plus when we, again, I would probably say for my um, patient with the GI problems, very important to me is that, you know, I may do the visceral manipulation to you, but the, if the diet is not controlled or if, mm -hmm. if you're really not finding what's causing your uh, heartburn and all that, and you're still putting that into your stomach, it, it's not going to help because you know, it's gonna, it's not gonna help you. You're gonna put yourself and also again, back on the restriction that you put yourself and you're hurting. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, posturing. So everything that's and back to inflammation again. So, and, and, and it's just gonna circle. that's the root of everything <laughs> really. So, I mean, we're, I, I'm, I want to say like a, on a team. So when I have a patient here, I always said, okay, if I have a GI patient, constipation, okay, are you following up with, are, have they given you a diet plan? Are you on a diet? Are you on this one? Because, you know, I might help you today, but you may not be able, this may not give you a long-term effect. Right. You know, because you're still putting in your patients and uh, your, your body into like an inflammatory phase. Right. So, so. It, again, it, it's kind of that whole web, like we have to look at what is your nutrition, what's your gut health, what's your posture and physical alignment, what's your stress, what's your sleep like, like that whole web that of lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you can target any one of them to help ease the symptoms. But yes. if you don't have that complete picture, it's just going to come back, yeah. right? Right. Yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, with constipation, or we already, uh, I don't know, some of you may have learn in the back in the day and our massage uh, therapists probably have told you to do your I love you massage to your stomach that will help you to move your food around <laughs> so like the eye the you know you, you, you massage yeah. it from this way I and then L and then you go to L the U one so, ah, so like tracing your, your large tracing ascending. your colon. Yeah, you go, you, you're really like how you're moving it from ascending colon to the transverse colon down to the descending colon <laughs> and all that. But sometimes doing it a self massage alone, probably not going to help you if the restriction is so deep that needs to be manipulated, that needs to be moved by somebody who is trained in visceral manipulation right mm -hmm. okay and then so the this is uh, I, I hate to say fun things the the fun things is that all right let's try to get you off the stool softener and see if mm -hmm. that will help so mm -hmm. how are we doing on a fiber you know yeah. like what did the doctor what did they tell you about you know eating fibers and all that what 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 is what was your recommend what's the recommendation to get you off stool softener so we we have to have a plan Mm -hmm. So we can, you know, I'm taking you off the stool softener because I want to make sure that my visceral manipulation really help. But, you know, you have to do your job, you know, what, what it makes to make it soft. 
you know, so that that's the reason why I cannot get into like back in the question. All right, have you seen somebody, you know, uh, ha have you talked to a dietitian or have you talked to your doctor about it? You know, like, yeah. So, so there should be uh, a plan to kind of help this together. So yeah, visceral manipulation is just amazing. Yeah. yeah. So, um, it sounds like from your first story about the woman with the back pain, you could see benefits as in as little as one session. Yes. Um, is exactly. that, and, and then again, granted, you have to kind of address the whole lifestyle and all the puzzle pieces, but in general, do you, do you see kind of like a range of how many sessions before a person's? Yes. Do you start with like, um, like, cause I know with my chiropractor, it's, um, depending what's going on and how, injured I may have been like he'd want to see me like every week or even sometimes twice a week but then we pace it out and it's like now like once a month just maintenance um do you have similar styles with visceral manipulation or how does that work yes and no so um with with physical therapy we have to stay with the plan of care so mm -hmm. and a lot of times um I would like I always want to start with twice a week for two weeks just to kind of like make sure that because everyone is different Mm -hmm. Some someone may respond to like, oh my gosh, I feel like I was hit by a train. I was so much in pain after your session with Isaac. Oh, yeah. okay. So it to sleep. can be pain. It can be, you know, that light touch can be sometimes in some patients can be too much. Mm -hmm. So, but then I was like, and then I woke up the following morning and I was like, I feel energized. I did everything, you know. Like they they have the energy the following day, mm -hmm. so they've got every so, um, and it's so much for the forty minutes to sixty minutes session. So, I'm a physical therapist, so I see patient in a clinic compared to um, if you just gonna see straight visceral manipulation, they're probably gonna take their time mm -hmm. to see you. Mm -hmm. This can be an hour to an hour and a half to two hour session oh, okay. in some. Wow. You know, okay. Uh, I, I, I have, I have, this is a private practice. So this is a tool that I usually just, okay, get it done and then follow up. So that's the reason why I have to see patient God. twice a week to start with, start with, and then we, we go down to, to once a week. And then with my pelvic patients, I see them 12 weeks. So if you get better before 12 weeks, let's say on the 30 days we reassess, and you're doing okay. It's like, okay, constipation's good, bowel movement's moving pretty good, no GI problems, no heartburn and all that, doing the exercises, doing all those yoga stuff. I love dog, more dog, very good to your gut, you mm -hmm. know? And so they have their toolbox at home, you know? And then, you know, what, what happened? You know, why did you have like a flare up? So, you know, we have that also, Mm -hmm. um we did the uh, like kind of like a self self-assessment and then before i discharge let's say and so, so that whole like, time you're while you're kind of working them through that series of sessions you are having mm -hmm. them do things at home there are like at home exercises and habits they can practice as well to help sustain yes. that okay yes and then well, if they're doing okay we try to do two weeks out see how you're doing without me because my patient will have like separation anxiety I was like oh my gosh are we done it's like no <laughs> we don't have to be <laughs> <laughs> yeah can I take you home no you can't take me home <laughs> let's go ahead and do two weeks out and see how you're doing and then we'll go three weeks out and then we discharge um in therapy there's no once you're on the maintenance then you're off so that's gonna be like maintenance in therapy is not as in insurance world it's not a skilled part Right. So that's that's not covered anymore. So we that's yeah, when we I talk to my buckle. right. So that's a totally different you know ball game. So but I have patients that will do okay. I I want to I want to make sure I stay here. So we're getting into like an insurance when we go to the maintenance. Mm -hmm. So maintenance usually we'll do three months or six months out. Sometimes people will kind of you know I won't see them until one year. It's like oh my gosh I'm starting to feel it again so yeah and then they're back so, so that yeah 12 weeks usually uh one or two sessions you should be able to feel the difference especially yeah. in restrictions so 
I do have biofeedback that I use with my patients to scale, kind of like getting their baseline, uh, how, you know, if, if they have like a spasm dominant muscle that you can see if they're, uh, you know, the biofeedback is just giving us, giving you a feedback, you know, how's your pelvic floor muscle is doing as well as your accessory muscle, which is your stomach and then your butt cheeks and all that. So we kind of like check that, make sure that everything is in sync, not one is stronger than the other. So we kind of want them, we want them, I want them to eventually to engage all of those together when they're, those are your core muscles to so when they do the activities. So sometimes we want to isolate maybe a pelvic floor um, strength on this first to make sure that the uh, glute is not working too much compared to your pelvic floor. You know what I mean? Right. So, so that's what we like. I that's another evaluation tool that I use. So I, I still have my hat on. You know, I still have my physical therapy hat. We gotta see. Got we gotta see. Get get them all together. You know, my patient comes in. I do see. I check the postures because postures, visceral restrictions can also reflect on your postures. Yeah. You know. So you 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 didn't you know some people doesn't look at themselves behind or you know. I didn't know that I do that. You know, I didn't know that when I run, I have my one shoulder up mm. and then I run funky, right? So I, that, I'm actually glad you brought that up because that was something I was going to ask. I remember hearing in school that runners, like perpetual runners, because of that jarring balance of running long term, that they can have more GI issues um, front and, and damage to the viscera. So is that something you see and you work with? Yes, yes. So that's why when um, my husband is a Spartan coach, I love going out there and just look, I can't help it. You know, looking at those <laughs> ladies and male not engaging their core. So I will have to have him one time and I, will, I think I, I've done it one time for him. It's like, okay, okay, Tom, that's my husband's name. Can you have me talk? Just give me 30 seconds. I just want to talk to them to make sure they're engaging their core out there when they do this. So, so I, this is, yeah. Even when you run, you should engage your core and that can help protect your viscera and your organs and everything from that jarring yes. bouncing. Yes, you, you need, you need to, you need to engage that. Um, I actually, uh, I mean, I myself went through that. I have my other physical therapists watch me. Mm -hmm. run on a treadmill and then they actually video as I was mortified horrified it's like <laughs> oh my god it's like yes no wonder why your right shoulder is hurting and your right you know my right side of my body is hurting and was that all coming from the core or could yes, that that could really like, come from well, anything you, right the feet yeah the... from from the core and they go you, you had to you, you had to do what you preach and I was like that's correct you know I totally forgot about it I had to go back to my basic so oh, could you yeah. describe to the listeners, because I think I remember learning all about like core activation for, for my heavy lifting and, and things like that. And it can be kind of a strange thing to explain. Do you have a way to describe to people? Like, what does that feel like? Because it's not just like, oh, you're clenching and you're, you know, squeezing and straining. So right. what could yeah, that you don't, you like? don't want to strain. You don't, you don't really, you don't really want to strain. So, well, First of all, yeah, when we say core, this is core muscle is just not just one muscle. That's what everyone think. It's just your abs. You know, <laughs> it's it, it, it's technically everything will be your your pelvic floor muscle, your back muscle, your extensors, your transverse muscle, your lower abdominal muscles, and then your upper abdominal muscles. Like that entire torso, front yeah. and back and side. Exactly. So what I always tell. Um, I guide them into like, okay, let's start up when you try, let's do activating or, or engaging our pelvic floor muscle first. So when, when you try to pull on your private area from your private area all the way down to your anus, so that's the entire pelvic floor muscle is. So a lot of times it's as if you're holding your pee on midstream. Like the or your, Yeah, or you're holding your gas. Okay. So, but you're not while you run, you're trying to hold. Yeah, but you're not squeezing your butt because that's gonna make you, you know, that's gonna hurt you. Maybe you might have some cramps after all that. So, but once you get to that, now I want you while you're sitting there, see, try to, and put your hands 
Put your hands on your pelvis in front of you. All right, I'm doing right this. <laughs> yeah. Put it right here, like below your belly button, but on top of your, your, your bone muscle to your hip in front uh -huh. of you. So that is your lower, uh, that's just your transverse muscle, lower abdomen. So a lot of times, so the, the bad things is sometimes when we, when we tell people, suck it in. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's not a good way to do that because some people were really straining it in. So, but if you start to engage your pelvic floor muscle, you're going to feel your lower abdominal muscle engage right. already, right? Mm -hmm. And then you can also imagine this bone right here, your, your, um, Ill, your hip bone in front, I would say, mm -hmm. your ilium, your, or anatomically your ASI as both of them. Mm -hmm. You want to try, imagine yourself to try to pull it in together. You, you can imagine when you have like a tight pants, imagine mm -hmm. that like you want to pull that zipper up and then you want to engage this muscle in to pull it in. Mm -hmm. so, yes. So those are, the, and then very common, especially for those uh, patient that just had a baby mm. and then they're trying to go back lifting and all that. Maybe have your, you can check some of, some of them already have separation of your, of their stomach. They call that the diastasis. And those are, you know, you don't want to start lifting on those without really getting to that core force. So maybe you need to see a pelvic physical therapy and have that check first before you start lifting and then yeah and another case in that i had uh um i think i had one time a seven eight patient seven eight year old but he's been like a marathoner like runner throughout his life and so sad everything in you know, at the end of it he, he starts to have some fecal leakage actually mm. fecal and urinary leakage mm -hmm. both of them are like really bad but we got it get it okay so you get to pelvic physical therapy don't get into um, I told him you know if you can get the pelvic physical therapy first and get you know get that check and all that before you get into the surgery and all all those stuff that that'll be much better yeah that'll be much better surgery without, without surgery hours. yes <laughs> without, without surgery and see if you can if you can strengthen it still yeah. So whenever running, lifting, and really throughout the day at all, like just having a gentle engagement of the core, not a clenching of the butt, not yes, a yes. sucking it in and paralyzing yeah. the diaphragm, but just yeah. that posture. And, um, yeah. yeah, I'll have to talk about it more. I know, um, my, uh, my sports massage therapist, she recommends this thing called a breath, <clears throat> excuse me, a breath belt mm -hmm. that just, she's like, she just puts it on just like an hour a day if she's walking or something just to help kind of remind her, to do that mm -hmm. gentle engagement. Um, yeah. but yeah, so that's, that can help protect. And I was going to ask like what symptoms might indicate that a person should check out visceral manipulation, but it sounds like really, it's almost like just like an, would you say just like an annual checkup? Like you should just go in <laughs> once a year or something. I, I would recommend. Fun. Yeah. So everyone, um, everyone has their own. Here's the, I always tell them if you can get into like an annual check for, you know, find a visceral manipulation therapist that can do a check on you for any restrictions. That'll mm -hmm. be a good one. Um, everyone has their own fee for service on that one. Uh, that's kind of like a private pay. Mm -hmm. But um, I always tell, go, for me, I do like a screening. Is it like a skilled part for me? If it affects your daily activities and functioning daily, then you know, and you find another um, problems that may that may be able to get you the insurance company. Yes, we, we do see those patients. But once it starts to, you know, I just want to get checked every, you know, once a year or get like screening. So yeah, that's something that we can do on the side, you know, for, for a maintenance type thing for on the fitness part. Yes. So I would suggest, you know, if you, if you, uh, if you have, time to have check everything because you really need to get into especially if you're starting to feel some restriction listen to your body yeah if you this is one of those like we kind of like brush off you know like we, we need some maintenance check it's like our engine you know right. and a lot of times oh, of, no but yeah yeah that check engine light that everybody ignores yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes and then a lot of times we have uh we have patients who's like Oh, I'm just old age. Uh, 
Really, it is because now you just now have the time. You have all the time now that you have retired, but you actually, this is like nagging like throughout your life, it's, right? It's amazing the because it happens so gradually to us, like this, the slight bit of stiffness over time that morphs into like a, a, a stiffness, achy messes with our sleep or like the knees that kind of bother us. And we just brush it off or, well, maybe my digestion's is a little rough, but it's just so gradual that so many people I find are one, they're either stoic, like it's fine. I got this or two. They're like, nah, I'm just getting older. It's what happens, but it's amazing how good we can feel when we get that whole wheel, like the nutrition, the physical, the sleep, the stress, like right. re rebooted. Yes. So I, yeah, I, I encourage people, if you think, oh, it's just because I'm old, don't assume that. <laughs> exactly. Yep. Not at all. Yeah. I need to, I think I'm going to have to find a way to uh, make some time to drive in and have you do an assessment on me sometime, Eileen. I'm going to have to make um, a trip over um, to Indianapolis. <laughs> um, uh, I'll be happy to. Yes, it'd be really cool to experience that and do that and see what I've got going on. I'm sure it's a mess. Um, but so, yeah, I know you you have said that you've got people who drive in kind of to come work with you because again, you help with kind of that when people have no other options, like that's where you get to put on your Sherlock hat, and work your magic. Um, but if someone still can't make that drive, how would a person go about looking for someone who is reputable and well-trained that they could feel like they could trust to do this vis visceral manipulation work? Yes, there is a website, actually. Um, one is the, if you go to baralinstitute.com. Okay, B-A-R-R-A-L. Yes, institute, or, um, it, and it's going to take you to. I'll put that in the show notes. The yeah, website. and it's going to take you to I-A-H-E. It's like an international association of health. Um, okay if you can put that on the notes because there's there's a tab that says find a provider okay and you can that you'll be able to put in your um zip code or, or your state even a country because this this is worldwide. worldwide so yeah yeah they they go to brazil to asia to actually um everywhere in the world so we have a lot of uh, faculties that's been trained for this one and again my training on visceral manipulation is through the Boral Institute. So, okay. and, and on that find, find the therapist, you're going to see, you know, the courses that they have taken. Mm -hmm. So VM means visceral manipulation. So you're going to see a number of VM, one, two, three, four, five. So all of those numbers right there is when you're going to see how, how much training that visceral manipulation therapist has taken already. So you can, you can be uh, rest assured that, again, so if you do, and a lot of the uh, trainers here can, may not just be a physical therapist. So in my class, during my training, I have massage therapist, chiropractor, you know, I have a deal, uh, doctors of osteopath, uh, yeah. everybody's in that, in that room. We have like, you know, and some, some, they want to just do it on their kids that needed it. You know, so everybody's on that room. So you can actually just seek and see, okay, I want, I probably need someone. It's like going to, I probably need someone who is a urogynecologist, you know, like mm -hmm. kind of like a combination. So if you want to have like a PT, if you have a pelvic problem, I recommend pelvic uh, physical therapies with pelvic and visceral manipulation technique mm -hmm. uh, yeah. skills. Or if you just want to have checked by a visceral manipulation therapist, you can, you, you can just, go on that find find the therapist yeah let's see so I, I think that's kind of the set of questions I have about it, it sounds like it, like it overall essentially because so much revolves around our torso and our core and our spine like anything else it's multifaceted you know it's it comes down to inflammation and that can be because of so many different factors, nutrition, sleep, injury, medication, surgery, lifestyle, um, workouts, all of that. But basically it sounds like everybody, just like anybody would benefit from a reboot to their nutrition program or kind of a reboot to their, their stress and adding and all that. It's just a good maintenance thing. You go to your doctor once a year, you get your dental cleanup. 
Um, you know, I, I go to a chiropractor for maintenance work and it sounds like this is another thing that just, it's going to give you that boost, but especially if you've got some other nagging symptom that isn't yes. responding to other things, then this is definitely an avenue to look in, um, and going to be much more natural without the side effects <laughs> as so many other therapies. That's that. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Cool. Um, well, I am curious, Eileen, do you have a recommendation for like your favorite books or podcasts or resources for people listening in our audience today? I actually have a favorite book and I have it right here. Oh, okay. oh, it's right there. Understanding the message of your body. Ooh. And this is um, actually uh, John Pierre Baral. This is his book, his book, but it tells you, and this is pretty much, I, I, it's not like Bible, but <laughs> I, I always tell them, it is like my go-to uh, as far as, okay, sometimes, you know, we're, we're, I, I will have a patient now, okay, there's no surgery, so what's going on, you know, and then it just kind of tells you what's the stressors, so mm -hmm. each one of us holds like a stress, you know, like when you're mad and you're stressed, if I'm mad and I'm stressed, I usually have, it goes straight to my stomach. So that is my weakest link. We all have that weakest link, right? I, yeah, so it, it, so it has this kind of like um, telling you, you know, maybe it's not like really a surgery related. It gives you actually some, some diet here too, maybe from the food that you eat. So yeah, it goes, it, it's really cool. Seeing was that understanding the message of your body, how to interpret yes. physical and emotional signals to achieve optimal, achieve health. optimal health. Yeah. Okay, by Jean Pierre. Jean -Pierre. Oh, I just yeah. pulled it up so I could look at that. Yeah. And uh, I'll again, I'll, I'll make links and notes in the show notes for people listening. So that sounds fascinating. I think I'm going to have to check that out. Yeah. Um, Okay. Is there anything else about visceral manipulation that we, we missed that you wanted to share about or last pointers for them on that one? Well, um, my last point will be uh, just remember a restriction, fixation, or adhesion to another structure, no matter how small it is, implies functional impairment of the organ. And that small impairment or nagging restriction that you, that's been sitting there in your gut or maybe on your chest may have been the last thing or the first thing that you could have just taken care of right now, not causing any problem, big problem down the road. Yeah. So listen to your body. Listen to your body. Things have a way of snowballing for sure. Yeah. Love it. And Eileen, do you have any uh, freebies that you'd like to share or anything that you're offering or something you want to promote an event coming up? Um, share about your business. I don't think you talked about that a whole lot. Your actual, what's the name of your business yeah. <laughs> and how can people reach out to you? So I, my, my, I've been to my private practice for, um, well, 10 years now. We celebrated 10 years last year. So um, I franchise with physical therapy and balance centers. So I do have other therapists that um, see orthopedic uh, patients. I have patient uh, therapists that does um, balance. We are a level two certified balance center through physical. Mm -hmm. So that means we can see like uh, patients with problems with dizziness, BPPV. We've mm -hmm. seen a lot of BPPV on some of our sports and athletic patient, uh, patients as well. And I do uh, pelvic and the visceral part. So that's pretty much what I see my patients with. Nice. So I also have training with craniosacral therapy. Oh, so those okay. is a, that's another uh, technique that I have in my toolbox when an emotion is kind of like getting into play with those of my patients. So we can kick this off. Maybe there's the emotional component on that. Maybe part. we should do so another <laughs> episode down the road about that. Yeah, the craniosacral. <laughs> yeah, so we're here in Indianapolis. So, um, like I said, we've been here for 10 years and we actually have a bunch, uh, we're in network with a lot of uh, insurance company, Medicare, Medicaid, uh, Anthem, United Healthcare and all that. Um, you, I can give you, we have like a brochure about visceral manipulations. I'll give you a, if you can email me, if there's anyone's interested, um, there should be 
And you feel free to share my email. If you have any questions, you know, you can send me an email and all that. And if you're having a hard time finding a therapist nearby or just kind of like checking and see, let me know. I'll be happy to. I may not respond within 24 hours, but I'm sure going to respond to you usefully. Yeah. <laughs> with, with all the in days. So. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. And I believe uh, you have for the, the physical Indianapolis, you've got a Facebook page. Uh, yes. a website and an email that you that we can put in the show notes so people can read. yes yes very cool thank you thank you all right well thank you so much Eileen for sharing about that like I'm I, I need to come visit that's going to be fantastic um, but I appreciate you taking the time to share about that and I look forward to talking to you again in the future thank you so much for having me Thank you for listening in. It is so fascinating to learn about these non-invasive ways to try to help people with pain and GI issues. So I hope you learned something new and maybe there's a new avenue for you to explore if you do feel stuck with some sort of nagging issue. You can check out the links in the show notes to reach out to Eileen, check out her business page, as well as I listed the book that she mentioned in the notes. So I'm thinking I'm going to add that to my reading list. And finally, please remember to subscribe and like this episode. It helps with the algorithms, and I really appreciate the support to the channel. Share with any friends that you know who might be struggling with some sort of special physical therapy need or personalized nutrition protocol to get to that root cause and feel better fast. Because remember, if your gut isn't functioning optimally, you aren't functioning optimally. I'll see you next week.